We have a 250 liter tank. It contains steam initially at a given temperature and pressure. The valve is open so the tank, if you want to sketch it like this, has a valve handle on it that can be opened and it's open and steam flows out of the tank at a constant mass flow rate. So maybe I just sketch little steam coming out with the mass flow rate coming out of 0 0.002 kilograms per second. During the steam removal, a heater maintains the temperature within the tank to be constant. So you can think about putting a little heater here and then the temperature remains constant. And the steam is removed until 83.2% of the initial mass remains in the steam. Okay, of oh, the steam remains in the tank. You organize a lot of information. Maybe you list down P1, oh, that's seven bar. And the T1, that was uh, 400 degrees C. And I think, oh, those allow me to calculate other properties if I need them, like U and H and V. Okay, and then over here is P2. We don't have information on that, but T2, because it's constant, that's equal to 400 degrees C. So this is initial state one, final state two, and what do we have as a process between the two where the steam is escaping? It asks, what is the time in seconds for the process? What is the final specific volume, V2? And what is the final pressure, P2? This is part C here. All right. So we're asked to solve for V2 and P2 and that time for the process. Well, the approach is to consider a control volume around the tank. And that control volume has, you can do an energy balance or a mass balance for that control volume. Here, we are just do a mass balance for the control volume. Okay, well, what does it say? Well, the rate of change of mass in that control volume with respect to time is equal to the rate at which it's flowing in, adding to it, that'll be a plus, minus the mass flow rate exiting. And if you had multiple streams flowing in, you could sum over all the input streams. If you had multiple exit streams flowing out, you could sum over all of them. But for this problem, we don't have any you know, multiple streams. So we just have one stream exiting. And so I'll come back here and I'm going to add a little E on here. That's exiting. And we have nothing coming in. So that's zero. Okay, and during the process, this on the right-hand side is equal to a constant. So we want to solve this ordinary differential equation. It's a very simple ordinary differential equation. As I learned it, we separate then integrate. So the separate stage is you just have, you multiply both sides of the equation by dt, and there you go. It's now separated. Then the integrate stage, integrate. And so we're going to initial, go from initial state to final state. This first integral you're integrating with respect to the mass and the control volume. That just gives us the mass in the control volume at the end of the process minus the mass in the control volume at the beginning of the process. Here we have minus the constant mass exiting flow rate and then this is just that time of interest t2 minus t1 that's what we're asked to solve for well what is the mass initial in the control volume well if i could calculate the specific volume at state one then i could calculate the mass at state one knowing the total volume of the tank and dividing by the specific volume at state one so we look at pressure and temperature, we go to our tables. Uh, table A4 for superheated steam has a pressure block of 7 bar and we look for this line of 400 Kelvin, not Kelvin, degree C and there is our specific volume V in meter cubed per kilogram at 7 bar 
and 400 degrees C, 0.4397. So we come over here, 0.4397 um, meter cube per kilogram. Where do we get that from? Table A4, superheated vapor. Okay, now we can stick it in with our 250 liter volume tank. So 0 0.250 divided by 0.4397, and we get that the initial mass that's in the tank is 0 0.56857 kilograms. And up here, that key piece of information, the steam is removed until 83.2% of the initial mass remains in the tank. So the M2, the final mass, is the 0.832 of the initial mass in the tank. So we can calculate that final mass, that's 0 0.4730 kilograms. That's our final mass of steam in the tank. Well, at this point, you look over and you say, well, I have the final mass, I have the initial mass, I have the mass flow rate exiting. Well, I can calculate then the time it takes so the time it takes, maybe I get rid of that minus sign by swapping them. It'll be 0.56857 kilograms minus 0.4730 kilograms divided by 0 0.002 kilograms per second. The duration of the process comes in at 47.8 uh, seconds. Okay. Answer for part A. For part B, what is that specific volume, the final specific volume? So that's what we're solving for here, V2. Well, the volume of the tank didn't change, so it's still the 250 liter tank, but we have less mass. This is the final mass in the tank, at M1, which you calculate it, so 0 0.250 meter cubed divided by the, not the initial mass this is the final mass m2 so it's a 0 0.4730 and the specific volume at the final 0 0.5285 meter cubed per kilogram and that's our answer for part b okay well what about the answer for part c what is that final pressure so we got this one, maybe I put it in my table, 0.5286, you know, meter cube per kilogram. And I look and I say, well, I'm looking for this property. And if I know at that state, state two, two independent intensive properties from the state principle, I'm able to get the other property or other properties like P2. So you, you, you look at that, that's a little bit of a challenge to find P2 at the temperature and specific volume. We suspect that the pressure went lower. It's not as high as 7 bar. Some mass went out, you kept the same temperature. It's less than 7 bar. What we have to do is go back to our table A4, and you have to say, can I find the pressure given that it's water, okay, we're in the table A4, good, at a temperature of 400 degrees C and a specific volume of 0.5285 meter cubed per kilogram. That's what we're asked to do. So we, we can take a look at our specific volume at 7 and our specific volume at 5 bar. So we suspect it's going to go lower. You know, the final pressure, P2, is lower. It could be between 5 and 7 bar, or it could be lower than 5 bar. What we have to do is we have to see is, is our specific volume given, is it between these two values? And so 0.5285 is less than this one and greater than this one, so it works. I break, break down the interpolation into two steps. I'll get the fraction of the distance between the V's. So V minus V at, let's say, 5 bar, divided by V at 7 bar minus V at 5 bar. So we're doing interpolation. Let's put in some numbers, 0.5285 minus 
0.6173 divided by um, 0.4397 minus 0.6173. And when you run the numbers, it's 50%. So what does that mean? Well, it's 50% of the way between this pressure and that pressure. And so if you didn't get 50%, you would still use this equation to get the final pressure is equal to the pressure at 5 bar plus that fraction times the pressure at 7 bar minus the pressure at 5 bar or just 5 bar plus that fraction, 0 0.50, times 7 minus 5. And so 2 bar is the difference. And this pressure comes out nicely to 6.0 bar. And that's our answer to part C. So when we come back to this problem, it's, you know, been picked. This value right here was picked, selected, so that you got a final answer for part C that was a nice even pressure in bar. But it would, wouldn't have to be. Let's say this was not 83%, but 80%. Well, if it was 80%, remaining that would be less mass remaining it would be a larger v sub 2 since it's a larger v sub 2 it would be a lower pressure it'd be closer to 5 bar so you can play those types of games as you explore the answer to this problem but with that we're done with this problem and hopefully you found it helpful